we are discussing how to synthesize an op amp and the first goal is to have a circuit that is sensitive to the difference of two voltages okay that is two volt everything a voltage is always a potential difference between two points but here we are talking about having a common ground two voltages with respect to the common ground and the circuit should only react to the difference between those voltages okay we want something of this sort where this is v1 with respect to ground v2 with respect to ground and we should have a current that is proportional to v1 minus v2 okay i mean this symbol is nothing but a voltage controlled current source okay this is some gm times v1 minus v2 that's what we want and since we have a transistor which is a voltage controlled current source and the voltage controlled current source responds to the voltage difference between gate and source so in the incremental picture we could think of having something of this sort where at the gate you have v1 again this is the incremental picture we have to take care of biasing for now assume that it's biased in saturation v2 if we do this the current here will be the gm of the transistor times v1 minus v2 but the problem here of course is that here we have infinite input resistance whereas here we have a very small input resistance of 1 by gm so unless the yeah, when the sources when the voltage sources v1 and v2 are non ideal which they will be we will not have an ideal voltage source ever we will not get gm times v1 minus v2 okay so we will get gm times v1 minus some number which is smaller than gm times v2 okay so now we know that if we have a heavy load that is a small rl and we have to drive it from a non ideal source which has a relatively large resistance the uh, known solution is to use a voltage buffer okay otherwise you would have got an attenuation rs rl by rs parallel rl you would have got a ratio of output to input which is that and if rl is much smaller than rs that number will be very small so very little of the input vi actually reaches the load but with a voltage buffer almost all of it can reach the load so we will try that solution so we already found some uh, transistor circuit which will act as a voltage buffer and that is the source follower okay or the common drain amplifier how does that work you have to apply v2 the voltage that you want to buffer to the gate of the mos transistor again all this is just incremental picture the drain is not used it's grounded and in this case at the source you will get something nearly equal to v2 if you do have a load you will get gmrl by 1 plus gmrl times v2 and you have to make sure that gm is much more than 1 by rl okay so we have some uh, buffer so the next thing to try is now this is the let me label the transistors also m1 is what i think of as the amplifier transistor and m2 is the voltage buffer okay so i have my m1 here and i had to apply v2 to this point but i'll apply it through a buffer m2 okay again we are still in the incremental domain 
So, I have not yet connected anything to the drains of the transistors. So, my first goal is to get a current that is proportional to the difference V 1 minus V 2. Okay. So, I will connect it up like this. Now, we know that we have to go through further analysis because first of all this is not an ideal buffer. It will have an output resistance that is not 0. It will have some uh, uh, non-zero output resistance and so on. Okay. So, we have to analyze this and in the simplest model I will assume I will model uh, m 1 with the transconductance g m 1 and m 2 with the transconductance g m 2 and I would not worry about the output conductances for now. Okay. If we carry out this analysis which you did yesterday, so I will have v 1 here r s this is g m 1 times the voltage difference between these two. Okay. So, let me label this incremental node voltage as V s. So, across this we will have V 1 minus V s. Okay. And across this we will have V 2 minus V s, where this is V 2. Okay. And this is incrementally open circuited here, right. There is no current flowing out this way. So, the current here, which is G m 1 times V 1 minus V s, should be equal to the current this way, which is G m 2 times V s minus V 2. Okay. And from this you can solve for V s, what will it turn out to be? What is it? Yeah, it is some uh, linear combination of V 1 and V 2. Okay. And then what are these currents? If I call that I d, what is that? G m 1, G m 2 by G m 1 plus G m 2 times V 1 minus V 2. No, right now I just want to get a current which is proportional to V 1 minus V 2. Later I will use that current in something, I mean I will pass that current through a load or do whatever is required. Okay. So, it turns out that this in spite of the non ideal features that we did not I mean in the initial synthesis we just said hey we will throw in a buffer. In spite of that buffer being non ideal, it does work as originally thought it will amplify the difference V 1 minus V 2. Okay. And the proportionality constant is not G m of m 1 or m 2, it is some combination of the two. Okay. So, now uh, first of all I assumed different uh, G m s for this and that, again that is not necessary, we can make it uh, for, yeah before that. Now, originally I thought of m 1 as the amplifier and I applied V 1 to the gate and I applied buffered V 2 to the source. Okay. But if you look at the structure the way I have drawn it, it looks exactly the same if I had originally thought m 2 as the amplifier thought of m 2 as the amplifier applied V 2 to its gate and applied buffered V 1 to the source. Okay. So, this uh, circuit the topology the picture is symmetrical with respect to V 1 and V 2. Okay. What is not symmetrical is the values G m 1 and G m 2 I assumed in general to be different, but we can make it exactly symmetrical by setting G m 1 to be equal to G m 2. Okay. So, let me make G m 2 equal to G m 1. Then what will be the voltage here? The this voltage it will be the average of V 1 and V 2. Okay. And what is the current I d? G m 1 by 2 times V 1 minus V 2. Okay. It is just half of the 
G m of the individual transistors that is all. Okay. So, now we have actually a symmetrical structure uh, for the two inputs and this is exactly what we were looking for in the first place. Okay. We want V 1 minus V 2 and the circuit should not kind of distinguish between V 1 and V 2, it should just give you the difference, it should give you a current that is proportional to the difference between V 1 and V 2, this is okay. Any questions about this circuit? To make it them symmetric. Yeah, I mean I want it to behave the same way from V 1 and V 2. Okay. I want the circuit to look the same, right. Initially it was arbitrary, I had applied V 1 to the gate of M 1 and V 2 to the source of M 1 okay. and I buffered V 2 and applied it to the source of M 1. Now, if I look at this uh, circuit, I could equally well have started from uh, V 2 being applied to the gate of M 2 and buffered V 1 applied to the source of M 1 uh, M 2. Okay. So, essentially the picture is symmetric, there is no reason to think of V 1 as the first input and V 2 as the second input and so on. So, I want to make everything symmetrical, I will use it. Yeah. So, there are some uh, practical uh, problems that will come up. Okay. So, now we have chosen a model in which we have ignored the output conductance and all these things. So, the best result will be obtained when we have equal, I mean identical transistors, okay, which are biased identical. Any other questions? Keeping? Uh, there is, we will see. I mean, after we introduce the bias, you can, uh, there may be some use. Most of the times it is not used that way, but you could think of some things. Any other questions? So, this structure which amplifies the difference V 1 and V 2, we have to add the bias to it. So, this is not the complete picture yet. So, this is known as the differential pair. Okay. Differential pair is just these two transistors connected at the source and here we have an open circuit in the incremental picture. That is no current flows out of this. Whatever current flows from drain to source of M 1 has to flow from source to drain of M 2. Okay. So, that is an essential property of the differential pair right? and this node which is common, this is the, because the two sources are connected together, this is, I mean many times these terms do not make any sense, but this is known as the source coupled node or more often just the tail node. Okay. So, we see that if uh, G m 1 and G m 2 are identical, right? the tail node voltage is simply the average of V 1 and V 2. Okay. Any questions about this? Now, this is of course, incomplete. I mean, this is the picture we want to have as the incremental picture. We have to now uh, come up with appropriate biasing for this, right. What is that? A gain of uh, which one? I mean, we have not yet defined any voltage gain, right. I just said that this current will flow through uh, uh, this G m 1 by 2 times V 1 minus V 2 will flow through the drains. We have to push that into an appropriate load to get voltage gain, a voltage output. Okay. So, just like before, if you choose a resistive load, you will have the same problems. I mean, if you have a large resistor, you will have a large supply voltage and so on. So, we have to use an active load. We will come to that. Yeah. So, what is very large is, uh, we will see how to get that. We will try to get as large a gain as possible. See, actually, if you think about this, this circuit is just like a single MOS transistor. If you had a single MOS transistor and applied V g to its gate, and grounded at source, you would get G m 1 times V g. Okay. What you are getting here is approximately that. It is just the G m of one transistor times V 1 minus V 2. The only thing is the circuit has been modified to react to the difference of two voltages rather than just uh, voltage at the gate. Okay. That is all. So, this is uh, so far this is simply equivalent to uh, just a single transistor. 
and any amplifier we will make from this will be equivalent to just a common source amplifier that is all. The only difference is that it will uh, respond to V 1 minus V 2 not just V 1 or V 2 ok. Anything else? Ok, so now uh, we have to bias this what is a suitable bias that you could use biasing technique? What is that? Which one? Why? Yeah, so we want the source to be open circuited. So, we would like to uh, I think initially I had uh, told you that uh, when we were discussing biasing and signal pictures and so on. If you do not want to disturb the signal picture what you can do is wherever there are open circuit you can introduce fixed current sources that will still remain open in the incremental picture. Similarly, wherever you have a branch you can introduce a voltage source in series that will remain a short circuit in the incremental picture. So, here we know that some current has to flow through the MOS transistor for it to be in saturation and uh, if we and of course, we do not want to uh, ground the source or connect it to some other point ok nothing else should be connected ok. In fact, this property if you think about it a little bit if you stare at the circuit for a little you will see that you will get this property only because all of this current is going back into that one ok. So, that is why it reacts only to the difference. So, we need to have we can have basically a current source at the source terminal ok. So, we have I mean that means source coupled uh, what is that source feedback bias ok. I mean now that we know the solution I can simply stick a current source or we can build it up from the beginning. In source feedback bias, the gate is connected to some V G 0 and then I have a current source I 1 ok and this is M 1 let us say and when I apply the signal somehow I have to arrange for this to become V G 0 plus V 1 right and similarly for my source fall over M 2. I will bias it with some uh, current the gate would be connected to V G 0 ok and when the signal is present you have to arrange for the gate voltage the signal voltage to be added to the gate bias voltage ok. Again that does not have to be V G 0, but uh, just for simplicity I will say it is and I have to connect this to that ok. Now, all along I have been saying that inside an op amp we cannot have AC coupling right because we want the op amp to work for DC as well ok. So, from here onwards whatever we uh, when we discuss building up of the op amp we will not use AC coupling within the op amp ok. Because uh, the op amp itself it has a very high gain right it will be biased correctly only when it is in negative feedback it is in DC negative feedback. So, I think this if you uh, plot V naught versus V D ok, it will have a very high gain, but that characteristic can move a little bit I mean that amount may be tiny, but it will move. So, you can you cannot expect to apply some V D and expect V naught to have the correct value. To operate in this region you have to have DC negative feedback around the op amp in some way I mean maybe through other circuits and so on ok. So, if there has to be DC negative feedback that means that from V D to V naught there should not be any blocking for DC there cannot be any AC coupling ok. So, it has to work for DC as well otherwise the op amp itself will not get biased right. Then what you will have to do is the individual stages of the op amp have to be biased individually and then uh, AC couple them and so on. So, that is just too cumbersome. So, we have to uh, make sure that our op amp works for DC as well ok. Yeah, so do you understand the idea that around an op amp there has to be DC negative feedback for it to be biased because the op amp's gain is so high, right? This is like the inverter, but uh, 
multiplied many times over. The op amps V naught versus V D, this I think we had discussed in EMC as well, uh, looks it should be something like this. That is, it will have some A naught times V D in this region and beyond some limits it will saturate. Those limits are set by the supply. Okay. And this gain is very large, it can be easily thousands or even millions. Now, uh, what happens is that because of uh, variations of transistors, because of mismatch between transistors and so on, you cannot guarantee that this will pass through the origin. If it was always like this, that is okay. Then if I apply V D equal to 0 and I am here and it will operate like a high gain amplifier. Okay. But it does not, it does not work that way. First of all, we have to use op amp in uh, negative feedback because even for uh, setting the operating point, the op amp characteristic could easily be like that. Okay. This displacement is actually very small, I am exaggerating that okay, because the gain is so high, a small displacement is enough to make things very bad. Because then if I set V D to 0, it is okay for this, but here it is all saturated. right? So, that means that if you have an op amp, there has to be the rest of the circuit around it such that This, this characteristic gives you V naught versus V D of the op amp. The rest of the circuit provides feedback. It gives you V naught from V D. Okay. So, that feedback you know that it will have a characteristic something like this. I mean for the amplifiers you have worked it out. right? So, I will take just a, our prototype amplifier. this is V D, this is V I. What is V D as a function of V naught because of the feedba feedback network? Hmm? What is V D as a function of V naught? Entirely due to the feedback network. This is how you decide the signs, right? You remove the op amp, you see what V D comes out because of uh, V naught. Okay. So, what is that function? Huh? Minus V naught by k. So, that means that it will have some slope of this sort. right? So, now the point of intersection will always be in the high slope region, it may deviate a little. Okay. Now, this has to work for DC also for DC biasing. right? So, if the op amp had AC coupling inside, you could not even write this characteristic for DC. Okay, There will be no feedback for DC at all, it will block DC. right? Is this okay or no? You have to have DC negative feedback around the op amp for biasing the op amp. Now, if you have to have DC negative feedback around the op amp, then that means that in the feedback path, you cannot have any DC blocks. right? If you have uh, AC coupling somewhere in the feedback path, that means that the DC loop gain will be 0. No, that is what I said we, we will not do. Right? If you have a high gain amplifier, you have to use feedback to bias it. Okay. Otherwise, now you will have to use like each one is a high gain amplifier inside, you have to use feedback to bias it and then there will be some other separate feedback around the op amp itself. Okay. That is one reason. The other reason is if you want the circuit to work for DC signals as well, then obviously, you have to have DC path through the, I mean you cannot have any AC coupling through the circuit. We will see, yeah. I mean, I did not yet say anything about uh, GMs and so on, so we will see. Okay. I mean, the most interesting case is to make the transistors identical and the currents identical, so they will be the same. Okay. Because I started with different values, I will label them differently. That's all. So, now what I will do is just connect it up like that. Okay. That is, this is a direct coupling, I am not using any. Uh, AC coupling between the stages. Okay. Now, if you look at this I 1 and I 2, initially I thought of I 1 as flowing through M 1 and I 2 as flowing through M 2, but really I just have a single current source I 1 plus I 2. Okay. And let me also make M 1 and M 2 identical. Then the picture changes to
Let us call this two i naught, or maybe just i naught. I think this is fine. Okay. And each of the gates is biased at uh, some voltage. And you have some signal on top of the bias. Okay. Again, we have to provide the bias appropriately for the gates, right? And M1 and M2 are identical to each other, right? It is okay. So, essentially I have two transistors which are coupled at the source, coupled at the source meaning the source nodes are tied together and there is a common current source biasing the two transistors. Okay. So, that is why this is sometimes called the source coupled pair as well. In the quiescent condition what will be the currents? through the two transistors equal why yeah what is identical huh? if no i don't know gms you have to calculate from the operating point now we first have to calculate the operating point right what's that yeah so, V g s is the same right, if this is biased at V g naught, this is at some voltage V s, we do not know what it is, but uh, V g s of this and V g s of that are the same. So, the currents have to be the same. So, each one will carry I naught by 2 and I naught by 2. Okay. What will be the tail node voltage V s? Yeah, what is that value? What will be the VGS of the transistors? What is it? I mean, we know what the current is, just calculate it. Right? That we assume now. I mean, we know we have to then evaluate the limits of uh, some voltages so that it will be in saturation. Yeah, assume that transistors are in saturation and work out everything. Later we can find out the limits for which it will be in saturation. Okay. V g naught minus V t square root, it is 2 times I naught by 2, so I naught by k m. Okay. So, it will uh, the source will somehow go and adjust itself such that we will have I naught by 2 in each of the transistors. Okay. Now, what is the if I apply V 1 and V 2 to the two sides increments V 1 and V 2 to the left and right sides, what will be the two currents? What will be the incremental current in M 1? What is that? Yeah. So, we just calculated that right from the incremental picture. So, the total current will be g m 1 by 2, g m 1 is the transconductance of m 1 and also m 2 because they are at identical operating points. g m 1 by 2 times v 1 minus v 2, it flows that way. So, we will have plus there and here we have i naught by 2 minus g m 1 by 2 times v 1 minus v 2. Okay. And this makes sense, basically the total current here is constant. Okay. So, if the current and the drain current of M 1 increases, the drain current of M 2 has to decrease by the same amount. So, it will have that symmetry. Okay. So, if V 1 is more than V 2, M 1 will carry slightly more current than M 2. If V 1 is less than V 2, M 2 will carry slightly more current than M 1. Okay. And what will be the tail node voltage in presence of the signals? Plus v 1 plus v 2 divided by 2. Okay. What happens if v 1 and v 2 are equal to each other? 
current will remain the same ok. So, that is a very important property of this differential pair which will not be present in other cases like taking two transistors and adding currents I think you suggested that to get the difference yesterday. So, we can analyze that later if we have time. So, here the point is for common disturbances for uh, identical V 1 and V 2 this circuit will not react ok and it makes sense if I say that V 1 and V 2 are identical to each other it is similar to saying I have a different value of the bias V g 0 ok. Whatever bias I have if I have uh, the two sides to be equal then the current will split equally ok. The current will be I naught by 2 and I naught by 2 and there will be no incremental current in the transistors ok. It is only when we have a differential variation that is one side being different from the other that we will have a current that is different from I naught by 2 in the two transistors is this ok. So, that is actually a very useful property that it reacts only to the difference, but not to common disturbances ok. This is fine. Any questions? Now, we can use this in uh, various ways right. So, we have now a current that is proportional to V 1 minus V 2. We can pass that current through some sort of impedance to get whatever voltage we want ok. So, this itself and also initially again I thought of M 1 as the amplifier and I was looking at the current in the drain of M 1, but M 1 and M 2 are identical to each other. I could use the current in uh, M 1 or M 2 or both ok. This is fine. So, this by itself this differential pair I will not show the bias yet, but let us say this is the block we have with the current source inside. You can think of this as in the incremental domain as a voltage controlled current source and it will respond to the difference V 1 minus V 2 ok. Now, assuming that the transistors are in saturation what you will get from here will be G m by 2 times V 1 minus V 2 and in the other terminal you will get the same current in the opposite direction and you can use this in any which way you please. Of course, the biasing has to be correct you have to connect the drains to some point such that the transistors will remain in saturation region ok. So, roughly speaking I mean in fact this is equivalent to a common so if it is equivalent to a single transistor a single transistor you apply V g s it will give you some drain current G m times V g s and how did we make amplifiers by passing that current through various kinds of loads ok. More or less everything that you do with a single transistor can also be done here ok. So, in a common source amplifier you pass the incremental drain current through a resistor you will get some minus G m R L as the gain. So, here also we can pass the incremental drain current through one or two resistors and we will get some gain which is similar to the gain of a common source amplifier ok. So, this part is easy I mean there are many more details with the differential pair we will uh, study all of them as we go on, but now let us look at some examples and then because I said the our circuits have to be DC coupled. I will simply show this bias V g 0 for now ok. In fact, later I will change the name also, but uh, I have a signal V 1 here and V 2 there. And I can connect various things to this. By the way before we proceed further now we know that the circuit reacts only to the difference and not to common uh, changes in V 1 and V 2 ok. There are many uh, circuits like that where you have a pair of uh, voltages V 1 and V 2 and then if you look at the average and the difference ok. The behavior of the circuit to the average will be different from behavior of the circuit to the uh, difference ok. You have seen that I mean some symmetric circuits especially when you have symmetric circuits and the circuit will behave one way if you have symmetrical inputs and another way if you have anti symmetric inputs and so on. So, these things you have seen right. So, in such cases instead of uh, uh, analyzing the circuit in terms of V 1 and V 2 the actual inputs it is more useful 
more intuitive to split the inputs as the common mode input VCM which is the average input and the differential input which is the difference ok. They have exactly the same information as V1 and V2 if you can specify either V1 and V2 or VCM and VD because there is a unique mapping right V1 will be VCM plus VD by 2 and V2 will be VCM minus VD by 2. So, this is known as the common mode and this is known as the differential mode. Again in the previous circuits course we have seen if you have a symmetric circuit you can simplify the analysis by folding or uh, shorting some nodes or assuming that some voltages are 0 and so on ok. So, essentially here we have a case where the circuit the way it is it will react only to uh, in an interesting way only to the differential input and not to the common mode input and this kind of analysis you use quite widely. Have you had the electromagnetic fields and so on? So, there also you use this right odd mode and even mode in some cases or since you use symmetry in some cases like if you have equal and opposite charges somewhere you will have some 0 potential somewhere and if you have equal and the same sign I mean of charge then you will have some other symmetry and so on. So, there usually this is called even mode and this is odd mode, but it is the same thing ok. It is just a convenient way of analyzing ok and if you recall from uh, EMC again we took this to the next level for three phase circuits where we had symmetrical components right things where we had three phases 0, 120 and 0 minus uh, 120 and minus 240 and also 0 plus 120 and plus 240. So, if you have three voltages instead of two that is a natural extension of this ok. So, here we have this again you can think of this as uh, VCM as having 0 degrees and 0 degrees a combination of V1 and V2 and this will have 0 degrees and 180 degrees right ok. So, as we go on I will uh, shift from using V1 and V2 to the common mode and differential mode ok. So, that is why first of all this bias value which is common to the two sides that is known as the common mode bias ok ok. On top of that we could have a common mode increment also, but we know that the circuit would not respond to that at least with the model that we have it will not respond to that ok. So, I will ignore that altogether and I will think of only the differential input ok. That is I have some bias and I have a differential input that means that one side goes up by V d by 2 the other side goes down by V d by 2 is this fine. All I have done is really change of variables, but uh, it is useful to get comfortable with these variables because there are lots of things that are much easier to analyze with uh, this choice of variables than with V 1 and V 2 ok. So, with this uh, new set of variables what is the tail voltage at the quiescent point V A C M minus V T n minus square root I naught by K n that is the operating point voltage. What is the incremental voltage? If I also have a common mode increment here, what is the incremental voltage at the tail? It is V C m ok. So, the input common mode simply the, the, the tail node here it is basically the common mode voltage of the input it is the average value ok. So, if we have plus V d by 2 and minus V d by 2 this will not move at all ok is this fine. So, that makes it actually quite easy to analyze right because all you are getting is plus V d by 2 increment across each transistor that is the reason you get what is the drain current I mean we already know it is G m times V d by 2 ok. Now, you know that I mean this has a uh, transconductance G m it has a gate source voltage V d by 2. So, the current is G m times V d by 2 and across this you have minus V d by 2. So, the current this way is minus G m V d by 2 or current flowing up is uh, plus G m times V d by 2 ok. So, this makes it even easier to analyze the differential mode ok. Any questions? So, for now I will assume differential inputs ok because it just it just makes the notation easier that is all. 
any questions about this? No, they are incremental voltages. I mean, I had written Vg0 plus V1 and Vg0 plus V2. Okay. Because I mean, I can't write Gm times V1 if V1 is a total voltage. How could I do that? It's only for increments that that is valid. So, I have the input common mode voltage which is the bias and I have I naught and here I have plus half the difference and minus half the difference. Okay. So, now right now we were just wasting the currents. So, we had an incremental current G m V d by 2 there and this way also it was the same. Now, let us say I connect a load like this, what is the incremental voltage over there? First of all, what is the operating point voltage over here? V d d minus I naught R L by 2. Let us assume that all transistors are still in saturation. Each transistor is drawing I naught by 2 that passes through R L. So, there is a drop of I naught R L by 2 in the resistor. So, we have V d d minus I naught R L by 2 okay. and what is the incremental voltage? If I apply plus V d by 2 and minus V d by 2, what is the incremental voltage over there? Minus. I mean it is just this incremental current times the resistance G m R L by 2 times V d. Okay. So, if you have a difference input V d, this gives you a gain of G m R L by 2 to one side. Okay. Then if I connect R L here, this will also have the same operating point V d d minus I naught R L by 2 and there will be there will be an increment how much is that huh? plus g m r l by 2 times v d it will be exactly uh, negative of that right. This you know if you have a symmetrical circuit with anti symmetric excitation in each half circuit there will be some voltage and the voltage in this half circuit will be simply the negative of voltage in the other half circuit. Okay. So, if you are uh, yeah, I mean you may want to go and refresh the concepts of half circuits and so on which we discussed earlier. And I can also look at the difference between these two. Okay. The output itself could be thought of as the difference between those two and what is that? G m R L times V d. Okay. So, basically it is like a common source amplifier you will have a gain of G m R L. Okay. Is this fine? So, to one side I have minus G m R L by 2 times V d to the other side we have plus G m R L by 2 times V d you can use either one or you could even use the difference between the two to drive the following stage. Okay. So, now this is a differential pair amplifier this is a differential pair with a resistive load and it will have all the limitations that we had for as a common source amplifier with a resistive load right. The gain is proportional to R L. So, you can try to increase the gain but what happens is you have to go on increasing the supply voltage and you will never be able to approach the inherent gain of the transistor. Okay. So, you would not be able to get a gain of 100 without having a supply voltage of hundreds of volts. Is it okay? But this amplifier is also used if you have a situation where a small gain is enough then you can use this right just like you would use a common source amplifier. The interesting thing is now this will respond only to the difference of uh, two inputs. So, that is useful in many cases. Okay.
but we started off saying that we want to make an op amp that means that we have to shoot for much higher gains than this here we may get 10 at most or something. So, what is the technique to use get a much higher gain what did we do huh? yeah but I mean cascading is fine but I mean if you have a gain of 5 from this to get to 1000 already you have to cascade so many stages and then you have to deal with uh, stabilization of that complicated feedback right. What is the first thing I mean you try to get as much gain as possible from each stage and then you cascade as many as you require ok active load ok. So, I have to use this with an active load for high gain right. How do I do that? Let me just take one output for now. This is VDD, this is VICM plus VD by 2, VICM minus VD by 2. Okay. The output would be the operating point voltage. After a while, I will stop writing this VDD minus I naught RL by 2 plus GM RL by 2 times VD. Okay. Yes. No, I mean I have not done anything yet. I just wrote the symbol. So, we have not yet figured out how to get this V i C m plus V d by 2 and so on ok. I will assume I mean just imagine that however, the voltage got here V i C m denotes the bias voltage and V d denotes the incremental voltage. How exactly we supply the voltage I have not yet used. I mean I could A c couple for instance, but of course, I have also been saying that you cannot use A c coupling within an op amp. So, when we make the complete op amp it will become clear. No, right now I mean you can include it if you want it would not change anything of the analysis that we are doing right now, but you can think of V i C m as only the bias voltage that you set and the lower case V c m as any common increment to the two sides and lower case V d as the differential increment between the two sides ok. But yeah I mean the lower case V c m could be thought of as simply modifying the value of V i C m right it is the same thing. This business of uh, biasing and increment right. So, when you add the input of an amplifier let us say even the common source amplifier at the gate you have to supply some bias plus some signal ok. So, far we have been assuming like he said that uh, our signal source is something that is grounded and then to that we have to add some uh, DC bias and so on, but it does not matter how we get it finally, we have to get the DC bias plus the signal right. So, that we will see how it happens later. So, now yeah this has this problem that gain is limited ok. So, I have to replace the resistive load by an active load how do I do that what should I use what should I use instead of RL as an active load. So, that we get a very high gain PMOS ok. So, essentially what I want is really a current source of value I naught by 2 right. So, that way I mean the incremental resistance of that would be infinite and assuming that it is biased correctly it will give a very large it will give an infinite gain ok. So, for now assume that it is in saturation we will later see how to arrange for that ok we will have to evaluate the limits right. I mean if we try to do that now it would not make any sense at all. So, let us assume that everything is in saturation and move on ok. So, now this should behave remember the quiescent current here is I naught by 2 the quiescent current here is I naught by 2 ok. So, now this transistor must be biased such that it will have a current I naught by 2 right otherwise what will happen again you have 
yeah exactly. So, let us I think this again we have discussed right in fact, it was in some tutorial. So, this is an easier thing to visualize. So, let us say I have a current mirror and this is I naught by 2. So, if this is in saturation it will carry a current of I naught by 2, but let us say I do this what happens in this case? What will happen? What will happen? M 2 will go into triode ok. So, first thing to remember is that the in saturation this will supply a current of I naught by 2. It can always supply a lesser current it can never be more right. So, a transistor let us say its gate is a gate source is biased at some value it has a certain saturation current for that gate source voltage. So, a transistor can have less current obviously, the transistors I D V D S characteristics look like this right. This is the saturation current, but it can have less if it operates here. So, it has to go into triode region. So, in this case the current will actually be I naught by 4 and it will be in triode region ok. What happens if it is that? What happens in this case? Sir, if this is truly an ideal current source this voltage will go up to infinity ok, but of course, this is also a, a real current source. So, maybe it comes from a PMOS current mirror like this ok. So, if this was in saturation it would carry 3 I naught by 4. So, what happens in this case? What will be the current flowing in this branch eventually? I naught by 2 ok. The smaller of the one will prevail right. So, this can supply I naught by 2, but when it is in triode region. So, it will go up into triode region. So, the point is whatever active load you have if you have to have any chance at all of uh, both being in saturation ok. You, this has to be supplying I naught by 2 at least its saturation current must be I naught by 2 ok. That is the only way it will work. So, please think about an arrangement which will make that happen we will continue the discussion from there.